Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we are back with another exciting episode of Stellaris. And where we last left off, uh, we were peacefully expanding our empire as best as we could. So I discovered, despite having people who grew up and spent their entire lives, in fact, their entire evolutionary cycle, living on Tundra Worlds, or was it Arctic? I always forget. Living on Arctic Worlds! We can't send them anywhere Arctic to live. It's confusing me. Uh, what else did we need to do? Before I get too far along, let's name the ship class, shall we? Now, there were a few suggestions. And I'm gonna go. Because we've got the Habsburg Revenge Corvette class, I think that the Interceptor, well, that what, what was once the Interceptor, is going to be the Burgundy class. As in the Duchy, the Kingdom of... The Crusader Kings 2 series. Uh, Burr, G-U-N-D-Y. Right? Let's check the phone. That looks right to me. Um, and I think, so what I'd like to do with the class names versus ship names, I love the science ship pun names, and I want to keep going with that. I don't know how many more science ships we're going to build. Probably not that many. So I'm going to extend the... Uh, pun names to stations as well. Now, before I get too far along, let's actually, one, turn off my phone vibrator. Uh, don't giggle at that, people. You all have sick, sick minds. Um, I guess let's do this, because there's, there's something I, I figured out last night that I didn't really like about this setup. What I want to do, actually, is put the fortune breaker up front and then get the flash bulwark in the rear. This gives us more weaponry. So before, we had one medium and three small. This way, we will get one medium and four small. History nerd, are you min-maxing? I admit, maybe a little bit. Uh, don't hold it against me. I, I don't think it's gonna last too long, but I do like doing that, um, just to mainly get more guns across. So let's auto-complete that ship, and let's throw on some armor as well. So we'll keep the Burgundy class named that, making sure everything here is fine, and it is. Saver, lovely. And then we can go through and take the Interceptor and just delete that, pretending like it never existed. Now, I think think I'm totally wrong. I thought I had defensive stations somewhere, but I don't. But yes, I would like to extend naming stations if you can. Like, I don't think you can rename starports. Let's find out. Can you? I don't think so. We could rename Earth, but I'm not keen on doing that. So defensive stations, I'll also like to extend to the joke name, because I do like them. Uh, you know, like, frick. We've also got the, uh, you know what? We've also got the creator here. So let's take care of this. Because there was another name that I liked way back, a couple days ago. The Lunar Tick. I like that. So we'll rename the fleet and obviously the ship if we can. There we go. The HGUS. Lunatic. I love Lunatic means herself an upgrade. Let's go through and upgrade some of our civilian ships, shall we? This looks like it's pretty much done, although, let's be honest, everything could use it. Oh, I guess we should also upgrade and save. There we go. Upgrade and save. Uh, science ship, you look fully upgraded, so we won't worry about you. Upgrade and save. And then we've got our defensive platform here the truncheon. Once we start building these, we'll get those names sorted out, and we'll get that figured out in the future. But I do like the sort of like, I guess, references to other series. Because I'm vain. <laughs> um, but I do, I, I, I like that. I like the Burgundy class destroyer. The Habsburg Revenge class Corvette, and we'll see what we get for cruisers and battleships. And of course, 
um, you know, we'll be we'll be having more than one type of cruiser and more than one type of battleship, I'm pretty sure, because we'll want to have some carriers too, but you don't necessarily want to make your entire fleet carrier-based. Anyway, we're going to go for research alternatives, and my word, trying to keep all this sorted with World War II also sticking in my head and medieval found. Europe. It's crazy balls. Crazy balls. Research that. You're coming down to do some stuff? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, and so what else? What else can we be doing? I guess the colonization probably should start. We can't settle there. We can do the two ocean worlds Systems there. We can do another ocean world there. That's not a bad looking sector, if you ask me. So that's going to be what? One, two, three, four? Uh, fully surveyed. So what's going on here then? Plant aggression. What ship is nearby? Oh, you're you're doing it. You're doing it for yourself. That's good. All right, those vines that ate the probes. Well, those guys were jerks. I don't necessarily think we want to keep them. Uh, what do we got up here though? Because we do have a better potential. Yeah, we got a much better potential for a more self-sufficient sector. I guess at least a happier sector. Someone used a mining laser from orbit approximately 5,000 years ago to carve a large body of writing into the surface of Wur 2A. The massive script covers a large portion of the moon's upper hemisphere and appears to be a short story chronicling the difficult life of an alien mercenary. That sounds pretty darn neat. We get a little society research out of that. I likes it. Well, we don't. The moon that's been carved up to tell the story of whatever his face is, does. So, yeah. All right. We got to make a decision, and we're going east. Uh, we can't do anything with those two, but we can do research stuff complete. with these four. And then we can add in Thebes to that as well, which will likely wind up becoming the sector capital up there. And that will be good news. And the nice thing about doing that is we're not going to be losing any resources. Well, any resources we're currently using anyway. Um, a frontier clinic is probably a good idea, considering the amount of unhappy uh, places we're going to be colonizing. But let's go ahead and let's get started on that. We've got tons of energy in the bank, so we can probably afford to do kind of a big colonial push here. Uh, really? Well, we'll take the one who are fanatical somethings, and you don't have a shipyard. So we got three colony ships coming along, which should be good. We can get three relatively nice planets out of that, including a massive 25-tile tropical world that we're not going to have to deal with all the negatives on. That's good. That's relatively something, and that is relatively something as well. So we got a few relatively something planets and one big one that's going to be ridiculous. And I can't believe I'm making this the capital of the sector, but we are. Go ahead and upgrade to planetary administration, because you know what, Thebes? You burned it. Uh, well, that's Special taken along. Complete. Uh, the dense grasses of fish and chips responded to the fish and chips <laughs> exploratory probes by disassembling them in a spectacularly violent manner. Yes, we know. Is this a different one? Have we got more than that? No. Okay. Is there a research thing here? No. Okay. Guessing that was a little bugged. Um, well, let's push to this one. Or actually, just move there. And that'll be fine. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. yeah, I guess. Would you hurry up and get that research station built sector, please? Very nice looking planets there, especially that Arctic world. 
uh, for those guys. So hopefully we get that text sooner than later. And I suppose we could probably do with two more Corvettes. But no, we should focus We should focus in on the colonizing, because otherwise I'm just going to be distracted by things. <laughs> you know, the potential of settling in here. The potential of settling here or here or anywhere. No, let's focus in on this. And that's a relatively distant sector. That'll give them plenty of time to build up before they have to go all military badass on us. Um... Oh, good, okay. Well, Tropical World, that's decent enough. Um, what else? We'll probably want some destroyers for the fleet here. In fact, let's go and take... I didn't want to split that fleet. I wanted to create a new fleet with just two of these, so we'll take the Gauntlet and the Cyclone. And we will then close that up, close that up, and then take the second fleet and the third fleet and get them to merge together. Because if we're going to have destroyers, we don't necessarily need to overload with corvettes. And having round numbers of things like 20 makes fleet management easier. Just, I mean, it's, in, it's the same idea behind um, army types in, or army groups in Victoria 2. If you keep them the same and can, you know, cycle them properly, then it's it's just better than having a big old doom stack. I don't like the idea of doom stacks. I don't like the idea of doom stacks in any sort of uh, strategy game. I think it's just not the right way to do it. Like, even if it was the most efficient way, I still, I mean, you guys know me, I'm not much in the way of efficiencies. I don't like that idea of being like, well, you know, we're just going to combine everything into a fleet power of 100,000 and curb stomp everything. And it's, well, but that's not, nobody in the real world would do that. <laughs> You're going to have defensive fleets. You're going to have, um, you know, places places it's not even what i'm thinking of but you're gonna have you know you you're not gonna want to do crazy stuff like that leave yourself wide open because you've got your fleet your only fleet halfway across the galaxy that's insane split that shit up uh so yeah so we've got our raiding force here which should be if 20 ships and it's not even a thousand we definitely don't have good corvettes although i guess it's only been 62 years my God, what has the Human Galactic Union been doing? Construction complete. All right, we got we got some stuff to do now. I like colonizing in big spurts like this. I think it's it's good to do. Um, we are gonna want. I think that's you. So we'll take and colonize you. We can take you from Earth and slap you down. Just realize something. We'll slap you down there. We still have the Hulfiers looking for a place to live. Um, We'll take you and slap you down from Sarek or Mindos. Oh no, that's that's Earth, right? So we'll take you and colonize you. And then finally, we'll take you and colonize you with you. There we go. Lovely. And then once we get that settled, we can sector the section off and it'll grow on its own basically from day one. Thebes got a bit of a boost, but let's be honest, Thebes needed a bit of a boost. This planet is not the best. But they got enough food production going, so that's good. We don't care about any of that. And yes, of course we're running in an energy deficit. We've got three colony ships heading out. And then we'll have three colonies to power. Ah, oh, how can we aid you? That is lovely. What would it take? I wonder. Uh, 150 influence at a rate of three influence a month. But how long is that going to take to have to, to happen? Not that I necessarily want to integrate yet another species, but 
I don't think these guys are going to be growing. Like, we got some transports. Uh, what do we got? A constructor ship. Like, I don't think they're going to be settling outside of their lands. Well, they are tropical focused, so maybe they will. And I guess if, you know, like, if they take this area... Well, no, they won't, though. They'll take that planet. Yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about. We got two science ships not doing anything. That's what I know. Where are you at? Fish and chips? Uh, you should survey that system. I don't know why you're not. Probably because I just told you to move there. That would be understandable. You're just following orders. Uh, where do we want to send you? Maybe over here? It looks like we already know about this sector, though. Maybe there's just something we don't quite know about you yet. So we might as well figure that out. And then we can send him on into Tanab and uh, figure out what's going on in that sector, too. Hmm. So, yeah, that should be pretty good. How's Hulfier looking? It's starting to look like it's becoming a little more balanced. Which is, I mean, honestly, that is to be expected. It was a conquered sector. It shouldn't take them that long to bounce back, especially compared to, well, you know, um, starting fresh from nothing. We will go with the virtual combat arena. I think we got room on Earth for that, don't we? We should have a space here. I don't think we do. All right, well, that's... That's fine. What I did notice is that we've got a spare Betherian stone, and that's not good. We should replace you with a Betherian power plant. Another proto-civilization. Whereabouts? The survey of Nomatar 1 has revealed that certain regions of the planet are home to a primitive alien proto-civilization. Our probes show that their Neolithic culture has mastered fire and developed a rudimentary spoken language. We have yet to see any evidence of metallurgy or written communication. Out of those guys, that'll be a planet we don't necessarily have to make our own. We've learned all about settling on planets with primitives. It's not going to end well. We got our three colony ships doing their thing. That's good. Uh, what else? We can probably minimize the armies and... Well, we'll leave the observation post up. 20 energy credits and these guys haven't landed yet? This is going to be expensive. Uh, I guess we are... Well, no, the, the Betherian power plant should help a little bit. And then we can upgrade it to a level 2, which will help even more. Leaders System gaining things, systems being surveyed. Uh, head on over there now. I think this area is pretty much clear of any and all enemy people. And we do have... System survey complete. Potentially some more colonization to go on in this area here. Which is nice! There's a lot of resources in here that I would not be opposed to having. Nomatar's done, so we can take you now and start getting ever closer to the Forbidden Nebula. So let's go ahead. Are we in range of that? No, so we will go here. At least I don't think we are. Well, we'd probably have to do the jump. Let's just hit that location. And we got little pockets of humanity stepping up over here. It's exciting. Exciting times. The Jurassic Quark sitting there assisting research. Lovely. We do need that. My word. So we've got uh, new colonies, obviously. Meredith Bay, Port Bixby, and Leffingwell. I like that name. Construction that, complete. Like, that seems made up. And I apologize if Leffingwell is actually a place. But, it like, it seems made up, but totally... Um, plausible name for just, just a place. Leffingwell. I like that. 
Port Bixby, I'm pretty sure that's a real place. Meredith Bay, I, I would be shocked if there was some place on Earth that wasn't named Meredith Bay. What I also like, if you take a look, uh, so these are just normal planet, normal continental planets with relatively normal continental planet names. Um, Leffingwell, is, there's nothing tropical about that, but if we take a look at our two ocean worlds, and I don't know if this is just a coincidence, but on our two ocean worlds we do have Meredith Bay and Port Bixby, which are nautical names for things. So, you know, it's, like I say, I don't know if that's actually, it, it's probably just a coincidence, but if it isn't, ten! Ten bio research. Why are you so biologically awesome? You can't even sustain organic life. So we've got no biology and no science. Survey complete. Maybe it's the lack of that stuff that will provide information. Let's go right into the Forbidden Nebula. Who's going to stop us? Huh? Nobody. That's who. All right, we got some colonies up, and of course things are going to start hitting the fan here because we're over our planetary limit. My concern is uh, getting these two connected for the sector, and I hope it happens. I hope Leffingwell creates a area big enough for this to work. Thankfully, you know, minus 10 influence and minus 10 energy credits, it's not the best, but it could be worse. Uh, let's get you upgraded to a Bethyrian plant level 2. It looks like that's not going to work. So we will take the Lunar Tick and... Oh, we have so many Frontier Outposts right now. I don't think we need this one anymore. I think we can safely dismantle this one. Because all this junk should still be in my space thank you Kevin you really helped out today well, who's mining these we'll have to go there and give those people a piece of our mind um, so now what we could probably do is go in and throw down our frontier outpost there and hopefully that'll be enough to connect those two uh, the reason why I'm concerned about things obviously being connected is because if you want things in the same sector they must touch so, I mean, that makes sense. Really. Is there anything we can do to get this going quicker? Probably not. Leffingwell. Oh, look at, look at all those blockers we can clear. Look at all the research on this planet. I'm liking this. We're done researching Teneb. So let's go up to here. What do we get? Arctic and Tundra. So I guess really my biggest complaint about this is just like, it's showing green because we have people who, who can live there, but we can't settle there, so it's still showing green. Like, well, I know, I guess that makes sense. Because the planets are fine, we just... Well, I'm, I, ultimately that's what's weird about it, right? Is that the planets are fine, but our technology isn't, so... Now, taking a look at things, taking a look at situations with the border here, we're getting closed off from returning here. I might want to get the fish and chips back home. Oh. Oh, I see. They're gonna be a while. Unless... I don't think these guys will ever be keen on letting our ships through their borders. Right? Because, yeah, we don't have border access. Damn. I don't know how we're going to get that ship home. Hmm. I really should have upgraded this ship. <clears throat> we'll get the Frontier Outpost built and then we'll upgrade it. Uh, the four... So slow. Look at that. So slow. I miss my hyperlanes. Next series. Next series. 
We'll do some hyperlanes. System survey complete. Uh, there we go, yeah. Kirim is done, and... I'm sorry to say, crew of the fish and chips, you guys are out there for a while. We don't... Well, do we have friends? You like us! Yeah! Trade deal. Uh, border access civilian for border access civilian. What do you want for that? Uh, we only need it for a month. Or ten years, I guess, is the minimum we can get. Beautiful. After reviewing the trade offer you sent us, President Urav Uvi Nadfinava has decided to accept it. Thank you, Nadfinava. Uh, we should probably get you. Yeah, yeah, just you come on home to like. Oh, I don't know. Well, we should probably stick you on a core world. So let's send you to Asher. What? Are you not a civilian ship? You should be. Can we not reach their land? We should. We should be able to jump from there to there, right? That should be approachable. Uh, do you guys? You freaking hate us. Well, you... And you guys are friends, too. So we got some friends in the system. But yeah, that should definitely be within range. Are you talking about there's no route for the selected fleet to reach the sector? That should, or the system, that should reach no problem. Have we got that outpost ship built yet? Oh my god, no! And I don't even know if that's gonna be enough. If it isn't, I'll just tear it down, because, I mean, we're going to get those borders to grow that big eventually. But we don't need to sit there and waste. Okay. Yeah, you could. You can totally make it. Why? Is that not... You, is that not your system? Science ships shouldn't be military ships. Non-aggression pledge. Civilian access. Lies within Sovereign Lowland Hedra Worlds. Sovereign Lowland Hedra Worlds is who I have that border access agreement with. Well, fine, survey the system. I don't know, maybe the month has to tick by? I don't think so. Our trade treaty is time. So let's just make sure we still have civilian access. And once you guys are done your war, I'll ask to join your alliance, though. I'm sure you'd be happy to have me. We queue it? I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. It could be save game compatibility. Who knows? That's still in our union, but Bazanak there is getting mighty close. Construction ship, where are you at? One more jump. Go! Go! System survey complete. Uh, what else can we survey around here? Well, we, I mean, we might as well, <laughs> might as well go for those border worlds. As I mumble like a crazy person. Like even on the fastest speed, this thing is. It's not quick. Granted, she's running on old hyper or old warp drives. Oh, you're just you're just out doing your thing, are you? It's funny that you ask how you can aid us, and yet you are entirely disloyal. It might not be a bad idea just to integrate those guys. They've had their fun, you know. They had their chance um, at 
galactic freedom. And it, it just might be time to to make a sector out of them. Mm -hmm. Thomas Schaefer's dead. Governor. So that would be the governor of the sector. Oh, oh yeah, all the colonies we added. Well, well they're not going to get governors. Uh, we will get a new governor for the sector, though. And we will have, oh, I don't know, agrarian upbringing. Why not? Farm girl, there you go. Go teach these Hulfiers how to grow stuff in Tundra Research Worlds, completed. Arctic Worlds, whatever it is. Uh, virtual Combat Arena means we can probably swip, swip, swap to Kelp. We've got, oh, the actual leader leader. Dun, dun, dun. So this sparks an election, which I do believe happens every 40 to 50 years with the military junta. Um... And it looks like we've got one choice, the commander of the taco truck, who wants to secure the borders and has defensive um, things for that. So we'll just let him get elected. I'm not going to spend any influence whatsoever paying for him, because why would I? We've encountered some form of alien vessels in the solar system. Zikmak Union? Somewhere... <laughs> In the grand scheme of things, is it these guys? No. Is it those guys? No. Well, the Zikmak Union are out there somewhere. Defensive stations will probably want to get mineral silos. Well, not the silos themselves, but the processing facility makes things much, much easier. We're slowly ticking away on that frontier outpost. We've got that upgraded on Earth? Systems yes. But obviously we're losing 20% of our energy production. Connor Evans Jr. is leading the show. This means the taco truck certainly does need a new uh, scientist in command. So let's see if we can do anything about that. We will probably go with... Oh, no, I don't want to sort through this. Okay. <clears throat> you, Nadia, you can be replaced by Katrina Dietrich here. And then, Nadia, you can command the taco truck. You can finish that survey is done, so you can finish off that survey and I'm gonna guess this survey's not done yet can we enter your space yet no who's a war Commonwealth of coalesced against an unidentified empire so I don't know who you're fighting but it's someone that doesn't really matter because you don't like us anyway so I hope the war is costly. Inactive buildings. Where did that go? Oh, you bastards. You rotten bastards. Are you still at war? Arid, arid. We need that Bethyrian stone back. Obviously. Uh, so, I know I was saying we're going to be peacefully growing uh, in the future. We're going to be going to war soon. And the trick here is, unfortunately, I don't know what to do with this. I want this sector gone. If I just release them, then, yeah, sure, they'll be friendly to me, but they'll probably still have a claim on Robolus. I can't just wipe out the sectors, can I? I can't just depopulate a planet. <sighs> I guess I could just take it. Take it and add it to the Hulfier sector. All right, 
that's the plan. That's going to be in next episode. We're going to war. I don't want to go to war, but we're going to war. Thankfully, these guys are inferior, and thankfully, us going to war with them should make the members of the Golden Compact like us a bit more and potentially pull us into their alliance. I don't want to go further than an alliance. Federations... Federations work if you're all AI or all human. Otherwise, it's not much fun. Because uh, for most of the time, the AI is making all the decisions, and you can't really do much about that. So, I'll avoid Federations as long as I possibly can. And, um, yeah, we'll go to war next episode, because we need this to be steadily within our realm. I mean, obviously we can get more sources of Bethyrian stone uh, once the colonies start taking off. Well, we'd have to go this route, um, and in that case we might as well just vass or integrate our vassals. But I would like this as mine, and that's close enough that we can add it to the Hulfier sector without too much of a problem. And besides, that's kind of an ugly border anyway. It's clear that they've stuck into, you know, land that is rightfully human. Uh, we'll fix that next time. So, thumbs up if you have enjoyed today's episode. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.